Over in that GitHub workflows upload YAML file, I know that's sort of the, hey, the configuration for GitHub Actions, as you mentioned. Uh, and those secrets, those are the juicy things here that are attractive for us hackers and, and, and pen testers here. Now, those are staged as environment variables. Are, are there any downfalls, as drawbacks? Is the environment variables just the way to go and then it's a matter of somehow making sure they are protected? <laughs> It depends a lot on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to access AWS, this is insecure. Uh, there's better really? ways to do it. All righty. Hey, this is super duper cool. I'm super stoked to be hanging out with two of my great friends, uh, Ignacio and Carlos over at Halborn. And man, it's been a little bit of time since I seen you both. I think we were hanging out at RootedCon a little bit ago. That was a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah, man, it was like uh, a couple of months ago. It was it was it was pretty great to have you here in Spain and finally meet you in person. And hopefully, in 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 soon time, we are going to be meet, meeting you again in in DevCon. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. We're seeing you in yeah. DevCon. Absolutely. DEF CON is going to be a ton of fun. And man, making it over to RootedCon was phenomenal to meet you both in person. Because, uh, hey, you're uh, across the water from me. You're a little bit away. But uh, I know you're doing awesome stuff over at Halborn. And if you don't mind, I'd love to kind of pick your brain on some of the other security and technology terms that I just keep hearing about. Because there's this whole acronym like CICD. And I hear all these words like pipeline and production deployment and stuff like that. Uh, but man, I am naive and ignorant and learning to learn a little bit more about it. <laughs> so if you don't mind, uh, could I just kind of get your own definition, your own words? How would you explain or describe what the heck CICD really is? Yeah. So CICD, normally there's different interpretations. Uh, the CI is pretty clear. People always say it's continuous integration. This means when you have a project, and you need to build and test all of the software to make sure that everything's running smoothly and your changes are not going to break previous changes, uh, all of your uh, packages and all the the applications can be built correctly without any issues. And then there's the CD part, which is up to interpretation. It can either be a continuous delivery or deployment. In my opinion, the difference is with delivery, you're delivering a package. So for example, pushing a, a container image to a container repository or pushing a package to an NPM repository, things like that. On the other hand, with deployment, you are actually making a deployment to, for example, a Kubernetes cluster or maybe a VM in the cloud, something along those lines. So just if I could kind of restate it for my own understanding, I always see like GitHub Actions uh, and Jenkins and CircleCI. I think those are some examples, right? Where you basically have a repository, like a GitHub repository, GitLab, Bitbucket, whatever. And then as you push to that repository, other steps and tasks and execution is ran to automatically release it or bring that into production just for you. Is that right? Yeah, that's the most common scenario. Uh, you don't need to have... a uh a repository to do this. Uh, you could mm. have your code stored any, anywhere else and just have a, a pipeline that executes on a scheduled task or maybe when you push something to an S3 bucket, things like that. Uh, I've always seen it used in, in hand with a repository. It's what most companies do. Uh, it's just easy for developers to make a code change and it gets released to the production after passing some tests and and some checks, but all automatically without having to to do anything by the DevOps team. Man, I know you guys see this every day, just about between all the tests and assessments and stuff that you're up to. Uh, what are some of the most common configurations, and how can so easily those go wrong? <laughs> like, are there any misconfigurations? Uh, are there any horror stories that you've seen? I don't know, weird, wild, crazy setups. So um, it's very fun you ask that because, um, to be honest, I'm not much of a DevOps. I always have been focusing on secu in security, mostly yeah. on red teaming. And actually, I started to meet CI, CD pipelines through security and through hacking. And to me, as a red teamer, CI, CD is, is, is like uh, a fantasy. It's, it's just perfect, man. It's the fastest way you can find to go to production from the earliest stages of development and in all the way to production, there are mostly no security concerns and you're going to find all kinds of secrets to access, to get privileged access to all the other platforms. 
So it's perfect, man, because you just need some developers uh, tokens or credentials and you are just going straight to production and straight to all the other platforms. It's like we have been improving the security world through years and years and years. And then someone just came and said, hey, now we are going to be automating everything to go to production. And if someone finds credentials, hey, all yours, you have just compromised the whole company. Good for you. So um, as an attacker, that's that's what I like, man, because the attacks are so simple, but with so much impact, that is just like a dream. Oh, man. I know you folks are the right people to ask uh, of these sort of questions because, hey, I didn't do the, I didn't do it justice singing your praises to get things started with. Uh, but man, Carlos, you're the fellow that put together Linpees, the Linux Privilege Escalation Awesome script, the Winpees, uh, alternative of that, Purple Panda, and so many of these red teaming and hacking tools. Uh, and Ignacio, hey, I know you're always cranking out Capture the Flag challenges alongside me and my crew uh, and doing other incredible work. So Man, I'm excited, and I'd love, if you're willing, to maybe do a little bit of show and tell. Can, can you pull up a, a screen share and do a quick demo of what exactly can go wrong with CICD when you can find some secrets and impact the whole company here? Yeah, we've set up a, a little demo. Uh, I'm first going to start just by setting up a pipeline, and then Carlos is going to be attacking that pipeline. So we've set up a GitHub repository. This repository is configured to use GitHub Actions. And the purpose of this repository is to get a HTML file right here into an S3 bucket, which is configured as a website. This way, we're able to just by updating the code here and pushing it to the repository in GitHub, it will automatically update it in, in the S3 bucket. And therefore, it will be uh, easy to see in the web. So. This is the, the current state of the website. And now if we go back to the, the code, we can see in the workflow directory under GitHub, this is the, the steps that are going to be executed by uh, GitHub Actions. In this case, we're executing on a push to the main branch or a pull request to the main branch. And we've configured some AWS credentials, uh, the region and then the access key and the secret access key. These are configured through GitHub Action Secrets which can be a repository specific or organization-wide specific. We see a lot of companies making mistakes and making them organization-wide specific. And then they don't realize any repository in that organization, even a test repository that is made public accidentally or, or something like that, can get those secrets. So it's important wow. to keep them private to the, the repository. And lastly, we have the, the actual job that's going to be executing. We're specifying that it runs on, on Ubuntu, and then we're checking out this Git uh, repository, so the, the branch, the main branch. Then we're just CDing into the front-end folder and doing a, a AWS S3 copy to the bucket. So if I was to go here and maybe add a little text. Nice. Thank you. Following your traditions. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can... Get at it. Now, where you're cruising through this, I'd love to ask, over in that GitHub workflows upload YAML file, I know that's sort of the, hey, the configuration for GitHub Actions, as you mentioned. Uh, and those secrets, those are the juicy things here that are attractive for us hackers and, and, and pen testers here. Now, those are staged as environment variables. And in my mind, that's the safest way to do it, right? There's, there's really no other option than hard coding them. Uh, are, are there any downfalls, as drawbacks? Is the environment variables just the way to go? And then it's a matter of somehow making sure they are protected? <laughs> it depends a lot on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to access AWS, this is insecure. Uh, there's really? better ways to do it. You can use OIDC, so OpenID Connect. To connect, uh, you, you're able to create roles in AWS that trust an, uh, an identity provider. So you can configure the GitHub identity provider and GitHub Actions will have a token signed by the GitHub Identity Provider, supplies it to AWS, and you, uh, AWS will be able to say, OK, this token belongs to this repository in this branch. Uh, they are allowed to assume this role. That way, there's no long-lived credentials. There's only temporary credentials, and it's way more secure. That's super cool. I had never heard of that. And man, we're going to <laughs> we're gonna have to chat about that and record a video on that. Goodness. <laughs> cool. Sorry, yeah. keep going. So the the change has been uploaded 
And now uh, if I go here, I see a green tick. This means my action executed su successfully. Let's go and check the details. Uh, we can see here the output of the copy command. And it just says uploaded the HTML file. So now if I go to my bucket and just refresh, we see that this has changed and we can see the new text right there. Nice. Okay. So simple pipeline set up. How could we take advantage of that? Is there, hey, some quick and easy gimmick in the, the CP, the copy command maybe? Um, so what we are going to do is this attack that is uh, infamously called um, poison pipeline execution. So we are going to be poisoning the pipeline. This is this sounds like super complicated and super nice. It's not all the thing that go into the same GML Ignacio had and poison it, which means we are just going to be putting some extra steps to be executed. So as you notice, John, um, we are not uh, logging correctly with AWS because we are using these environmental variables. And, and actually, this is a question that, that a lot of clients have. Like, hey, guys, is there any other more secure way to do this stuff? Because we have tens of different API keys in environmental variables. Like, how can we protect them? And the usual thing to recommend is you can use uh, vowels. You should be encrypting them. But it's true that at some point, they are going to be decrypted and some process is going to be accessing them. So the way to protect these credentials is to not have those credentials. So if you can go to AWS and say, trust this repo, then you don't need credentials and only people that have access to the repo is going to be able to access. So the same thing should be able to be possible with other platforms. But as you said, it's not very common. So at the end, what you need to do is to protect those credentials. In GitHub, you could use environments um, in order to only give access to some branches to the, to the credentials to kind of protect them. So there are always some ways, but ideally, you didn't even need to, to have them. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now, and as you can see, this is exactly the same repo that Ignacio has been using in, in his demo. And as I told you before, John, um, this is this is neat because we are not only going to be able to compromise AWS, we are also going to be able to compromise production with just having installed some uh, right access over this repo. This means that I just installed some credentials, um, some GitHub token, or even just some GitHub cookie, and I'm just a developer in this uh, organization. So I'm just going to be changing the production web page. Um, I'm just going to misdirect the viewers and say that John was here hacking. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the blame on me. I see. Yeah. Hope you don't, you don't mind. Um, now I'm going to be, in this case, I'm going to be able to commit directly to the main branch. In some other occasions, we might need to bypass some branch protection, but we will be talking about that uh, later probably. So now I just commit the change. And uh, maybe this is going to be executing. I don't want to be executing this right now. I want to do everything at once. So let me change also the, the pipeline. So this is the attack that is called a uh, pipeline poison in execution. That sounds really cool, but actually it's just about putting a new command to be run. And we know that the secrets are going to be in an environmental variable. So what if we just do n uh, base64 and we need to base64 encode it because if GitHub noticed that you just um, print some sensitive information in the action, it is going to mask it. So if we just put it in base64, it's going to be okay. So I just commit a change again to the main branch. Now the action is going to be running. Yeah, we have this here. Okay. So if we come here, we can just see all the environmental variables that this uh, run had. All just masked within base64, so it's not trying to show like any sensitive info. Okay. Yeah. That's like always the tactic, right? When you're when you're beating up CI/CD. It's fairly common, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you always get to see a whole lot of the like action in the in the CI/CD pipeline build output, or are there in some scenarios where you don't, and you just sort of have to kind of do it blind? Have you ever run into that? I actually haven't. Uh, yeah. Normally, this kind of assessments, when we do them, we have a uh, right access to the repositories. Gotcha. Uh, there could be the scenario where you only have like an SSH key from a developer, and you have access to push to a repository, but not to the UI. That's completely mm. uh, a plausible scenario. 
So I have um, converted this base64 into, well, I have just decoded. I just put it in env base64 and, and decoded. And I wanted to show you uh, the ton of information that by default GitHub Actions have inside the inside the worker, just so the action knows the context where everything is happening. But obviously we're interested in the more, um, in the sensitive environmental variables we have been talking about. These are the AWS secret and access key that actually you can just see them here. So nice. we just executing env and base64 encoding it, we just manage to get access to the repo with whichever permissions these uh, these credentials have. If we were going to go back to the original website, we can see that actually our changes uh, has been published in production. So we have uh, successfully compromised not only the production web page, but also the, the AWS credentials. And actually we, we just saw here a very, very, very easy way to compromise a GitHub action, uh, stealing some well, interesting sensitive credentials, but actually there are a ton of ways that you can manage, that you can follow to inject code in a GitHub actions, to compromise a, a repository, to bypass some GitHub protections. And actually there is a page in, in Cloud Hack Tricks here, a, a book that is free and open to, to everybody that is going to introduce you to the, uh, well, magnificent world of CI, CD and, and cloud and is also going to be giving you some hints and some nice techniques about how you could just compromise GitHub Actions. Like just take a look to all these different techniques you could be using to compromise a GitHub repo. It's it's crazy and, and it's just GitHub. We also have GitLab, we have CircleCI, we have Jenkins. Uh, we can go to Terraform, to Atlantis, like there are wow. tons of different platforms you could be compromising with very, very similar techniques uh, that fortunately you can find here in, in Hacktrix. I don't know, John, well, what do you think about this field of cybersecurity? Oh man, that is just so wild. Like j kind of as you were alluding to at the very start, um, I just think it's crazy that, yeah, maybe I, I realize, hey, we're kind of starting with baby steps here. We're going to crawl, walk, and then run for some other awesome stuff you'll showcase. But like, even that small, simple, hey, just add it in a whole other step, like modify and tamper with the GitHub actions to begin with or the whole workflow for the pipeline. Uh, that is the tip of the iceberg, but that can gain you so much access to the whole backend production system, like an entire AWS enclave. So, man, I just think it's wild and I can totally see and understand why there is so much more focus on CICD. And I'm just stoked and excited to go see the rest of the awesome stuff. <laughs> uh, hey, I think we got a couple more videos where we're going to be able to have a chance to get together uh, and see some more magic tricks of all the stuff that you guys are up to. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for just doing this even setting off these fireworks i think hey that's a uh, one way to get us started and i'm stoked to see what's coming next so thank you gentlemen <laughs> thanks for having us man